Hello, my name is Jani Yaroszkiewicz, a Senior Health Officer at the Leicester Royal Infirmary. Welcome to this five minute presentation on cardiovascular disease caused by atherosclerosis. I will discuss the pathophysiology of atherosclerotic disease and risk factors which are important for understanding preventative measures, management and treatment strategies. The two latter topics will be covered in an additional presentation. Cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death worldwide and covers a wide range of conditions with atherosclerosis being implicated as a cause for the vast majority. The consequence of atherosclerotic plaque formation and or rupture is by far the most common cause of cardiovascular disease, for example the acute coronary syndromes and also cerebrovascular disease from transient ischemic attacks to ischemic strokes. This diagram illustrates atherosclerotic development, which can be defined as a complex inflammatory process characterised by lipid and macrophage rich plaque formation as a consequence of endothelial arterial wall injury. Many factors can damage the arterial lining, from sheer mechanical stresses, for example turbulent blood flow caused by hypertension or at sites of arterial bifurcations, to biochemical and immunological factors. Following endothelial damage, there is increased permeability of the vessel wall to plasma proteins, predominantly lipoproteins, into the intima. Macrophages then engulf the lipoproteins and form lipid-laden foam cells, which are seen as fatty streaks. With cytokine release and further migration and proliferation of macrophages and smooth muscle cells, a growing fibrolipid plaque forms. With plaque progression, any further damage to the lumen causes platelet aggregation and thrombus formation, and as blood pools into the ruptured plaque it becomes unstable, growing in size to reduce vessel circumference. When the diameter of the lumen is halved, hemodynamically significant stenosis occurs, which causes ischemia with increased oxygen demand. Total occlusion results in infarction distally. Unstable plaques can also rupture and form emboli at distant sites. Atherosclerosis is inevitable as we age and the pathological process occurs in all from early adult life. However, if we recognise the factors that contribute to its development, we can appreciate ways in which to slow progression. The main modifiable risk factors include hypertension, smoking, cholesterol and diabetes, but of course the factors we cannot influence are increasing age male gender, family history and genetic composition. There are many causes of primary hyperlipidemias which can be defined broadly according to the lipid derangement of combined hyperlipidemias, hypercholesterolemia and hypertriglyceridemias. Non-specific physical manifest manifestations may include xanthelasma. The most common form is familial combined hyperlipidemia manifesting as high low-density lipoproteins and high triglyceride levels causing suppression of high-density lipoproteins leading to increased cardiovascular risk. Primary hypercholesterolemia is an autosomal dominant disorder which can be hetero or homozygous with the latter presenting with ischemic heart disease in childhood and death occurring in adolescence. The defective gene causes underproduction of LDL cholesterol receptor in the liver and pathological tendon xanthomas are seen. It is important to be aware of these conditions because understanding their etiology will help direct treatment. Prevention is better than cure and therefore addressing modifiable risk factors is very important because progressive disease can be fatal if not grossly disabling. Patient education plays a huge part in this because their understanding of the health implications of their actions may help to influence lifestyle cho choices and helps reduce risk. Pharmacological interventions such as antihypertensives, antidiabetic medications and lipid lowering therapy are of course valuable, but lifestyle modifications are often the first line approach. Encouragement of a low salt, low saturated fat, healthy, well balanced diet along with exercise can reduce blood pressure, cholesterol and blood sugars. Stopping smoking is one of the best health protective steps overall that patients can take. And specifically, smoking, smoking almost doubles the likelihood of having an MI, 
compared to age match non-smokers because of the toxic nicotine, tobacco and carbon monoxide which, as well as causing endothelial injury, increase strain on the heart through mediating adrenaline release. It has to be remembered that stopping smoking can be a very difficult task for patients and where possible appropriate support should be offered, for example nicotine replacement. In summary, understanding how and why atherosclerosis develops is important in being able to reduce cardiovascular disease risk. For those that have already developed a significant degree of disease, addressing modifiable risk factors is still crucial, but pharmacological management and or invasive therapies may be required to treat or at least manage cardiovascular disease caused by atherosclerosis.